So today is going to be great. And we are going to pause from our regularly scheduled programming of learning about the Ten Commandments, and we are going to talk about being a team player. So today's sermon may be a little different than you're used to because I'm usually used to working with kids, and there's lots of interaction. So you guys are going to have to humor me a little bit, and you're going to have to be excited like a child if you're asked to participate. So like last or two weeks ago now at VBS, when I was asking for volunteers from the audience, I got like evil eyes when I didn't call on kids because they're so excited. I can't wait to see that from you guys. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. Um, I will not have you do any crafts. I'm not going to have you do a game today. But there is the opportunity for some interaction. So did you ever notice that in the Bible that God had a team? They were called Jesus' 12 disciples. I'm going to read a story about how Jesus started that team. It is found in John chapter 1, verses 35 through 45, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. John the Baptist was standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, he looked at Jesus and declared, Look, there is the Lamb of God. When his two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw the following. What do you want? He asked them. They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying, and they remained with him the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the men who heard what John said and then followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. The and, uh, then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, Your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip, and he said to him, Come, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida. Andrew and Peter's hometown. Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, we have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. That story tells us that Jesus started to create the team called the 12 disciples. Here is something we need to all remember. Today, God still has a team. We are that team. That means that each one of us is part of the team, and we have to have faith in him. So some days, we might not feel like we're part of that team. And that doesn't matter, because we still are. Do you ever notice that Jesus called each of those disciples in just a little bit different way than how he called the other ones? The same is true today. We are all part of God's team and we each become part of that team in our own unique way. We never have to compare ourselves to anyone else. As part of God's team, Jesus believes we can do his work even, when, even more than Pastor Stan believes that I can do the sermon today. In fact, the Bible says we can do all things he asks us to do. We just need to do it with trust in him and learn to work together as a team. So now, this is some participation. Okay, now raise your hand if you know how to spell the word team. Oh, I'm a little frightened because there's not a lot of you. Okay, um, how do you spell team? T-E-A-M, excellent job. Okay, so what you're saying is there is no I in team. No I in team, okay. It would have been easy for me to say no for standing up here today because this is a little bit terrifying. Um, most of the people I deal with are like here and it's cool. Um, but I thought that um, uncomfortable was not the best for our team. So now I really need a couple volunteers, like strong volunteers, maybe two. Two strong volunteers. Bill Mitchell, I can tell, is wanting to volunteer. Yep, thank you, Bill. He didn't even know. I, I think his, his arm got stuck a little bit on the way up. Okay, 
And um, so, come on up, Bill. You didn't even know. Yep. Oh, and look at Billy got out of his seat too. Billy wants to help. Come on up. Okay. I just have to grab something over here. Okay. I didn't bring eggs to make you all breakfast. That was hours ago. Okay. So I know it's a little bit messy up here. Sorry about that. There's a lot going on. For those of you who came for communion, I apologize. I am not able to provide you with communion, but that will happen with Pastor Stan on another day. So here we have some eggs. Like, for real eggs, they are not hard-boiled, okay? <laughs> they have no idea what's happening right now. Okay. We're going to put those there, and I'm just going to come around here for a second, and don't worry, I'm really the one getting messy. I just need your assistance. Okay. So, there's, um, I could have been selfish today, and I could have caused... I could have like helped the problem along and not offered um, to do anything. Did I offer? I don't know. But here's the I that we just said is not in team. Okay. Oh man, hold on. I need to get some towels for this, I think. Look at all the stuff I brought just in case. Okay. Well, we want to make sure this is consistent. So could you both come up here for just a minute? Move all this stuff out of the way. Can you just help me? I'm going to stand on this egg. So maybe, Billy, will you come on this side? Okay, great. Okay, let's see. All right, so um, I'm just, you're going to help me stand on this egg carefully. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> That's really messy. I just proved to you that it is not a hard-boiled egg. I'm going to go ahead and just wipe that right here on the towel. Okay. All right. So, no I in team. Right. Got it. All right. We'll put that up there. So, I brought some more eggs. Um, can you bring that one back over here for a minute, please? Thank you. All right. I might have to go this way because it's a little bit wider. All right. So, here I have two dozen eggs. Trying really hard not to get it everywhere. Okay. This time, I'm going to need your help standing on these. Okay, here we go. I'm going to stand here for a second while I get in the bucket. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. One, two, three. Okay, all right, all right, all right. All right, I'm on the eggs. Okay, I'm going to need your help getting back out a second. <laughs> This is going to be messy. I didn't think about this with the whole bucket factor because I've done this once before. This could be bad. Okay. There we go. All right. So, um, thank you, gentlemen. You can sit down. Um, I'm going to tell you what happened in here in a minute. I think my shoes are good. Okay. That's why I wore flip-flops. And so, probably about a year or more ago, I did this experiment or object lesson in with the kids, and I proceeded to do, or to do probably like three or four different egg experiments. I don't know why, that's just what I started to do. So then they became, um, they, they looked forward to the next egg experiment until I had to tell them we're not doing that every week. But I am not kidding you that every week now they still ask me if I'm going to bring eggs in. So back to what we're talking about. That one definitely did not make it. However, these ones did. Okay, here's my eggs. That's my team. Because when we are not only thinking of the I, and we are thinking of the whole team, together we can support each other. Together we are stronger. So if you are on a team, let's say a sports team, the regulations, they don't allow you to play the game if you don't have the proper amount of people. I played sports through high school and college. A little softball, a little ice hockey, a lot of lacrosse, a lot of field hockey. And there were many times over the years that my teammates might get sick or injured and they couldn't compete. Because they are team sports, it's not like you could just go out there and play, the, I, like I could go out there and play the whole game by myself. 
So in, ho in field hockey and lacrosse, I was goalie. If I were trying to keep the balls out of the net while trying to score on the other team with them all playing against me, it really wouldn't have worked very well. I couldn't keep up with all of that. But there is no I in team. It doesn't matter how good I might have been. I could not have played that whole game by myself. The same is true in life. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14, it says, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. What that means is that the body of Christ, or all of humankind, are a team. The body is not supported by one person. It's not like, it's only Betty, it's all on you. It's not. Because, Betty, it's on you and Alan and Carrie and me and everybody here. And everybody who's not here. Everybody who's watching on their screens at home. Everybody who you see at the grocery store. We are put on earth to do God's work. We are one. And we are strong, strongest together when we are working in unity. Just like the egg ob object lesson over there, teamwork is the key to living life in harmony so that we can do God's will. Now, um, we may have just agreed, I think we all agreed, that there is no I in team. It is spelled T-E-A-M. We are going to use it as an acronym. All right, so the T for today in team is for trust. Trust is the belief that, um, the belief in reliability, in truth, in ability, in strength of someone or something. So Pastor Stan trusted me today to come and deliver a message to you. He didn't walk up to somebody he met at Starbucks, he talks to a lot of people at Starbucks, but he did not walk to somebody at Starbucks and ask them to come in and give a sermon. He and I have built a relationship over many years that allowed him to feel comfortable letting me speak in front of you all today. The E in team is for encouraging others. There are very few people who knew that I was giving this sermon here today because it happened last minute. However, each person that did encouraged me. They said kind words and they helped me believe that I could do this. Having a support system is very important and it allows you to believe in yourself and to do things that you might not otherwise do. The A in team is for acknowledging our gifts. Earlier I quoted 1 Corinthians 12, 14, but if you read 1 Corinthians 12 in its entirety, it explains that although we make up the body of Christ, we are all given different gifts. I have often said this to the kids in Sunday school, how boring would it be if we were all created the same? I truly believe that. I mean. I like to think, at least to my kids, I like to think I'm pretty cool, but I'd be super bored if I had to deal with me all the time. And so um, that kind of brings me to another little object lesson for today. I brought a puzzle. Which of these pieces do you think is most important? Doesn't matter the puzzle, I just grabbed one. Um, this, look at, it's not even opened. Um, but what do you think, you guys? What is the most important piece of the puzzle? Is it the corner? Nigel, you have a preference? Yell it loud. Oh, I think you helped me write this or something. But um, you're right. So I sometimes like to think, like, I like to start with the corners or the edges because that helps me complete the puzzle. Or maybe, like, in this case, there's, this is actually a cereal puzzle, like, all different types of cereal. So maybe if I found, I don't know, like, the Cheerios, then I know it goes in the middle, and that helps me complete the puzzle. But Nigel's right. The reality is that we need all these pieces. And they work together to give us the final product. Have you ever done a puzzle with missing pieces? I have four kids. It happens a lot in my house, and it is super frustrating. And <laughs> um, because all the pieces are essential. And if you don't have some of the pieces, you can't complete it. If they're not working together, you can't complete that puzzle. Each person has something special and unique to offer. Out of love, God created each one of us differently. A different piece of his puzzle. So that we could be placed together 
and so that we could complete his plan. I often find it hard to acknowledge my own gifts. Maybe you do too. Today I can tell you that one of my gifts is being adaptable or being able to easily modify, which leads us to the M in team. Okay, for M, modify, your game plan. Until yesterday evening, I was planning to come to church and to teach Sunday school at the 1030 service. I would teach the kids about our next commandment. We would do a game, maybe a craft, um, to reinforce what we were learning. Instead, we are not having Sunday school today, and we are here talking about what it means to be a team player. I had to modify my game plan. So I love country music, and I really enjoy the artist Thomas Rhett. So this is re really playing into the story. If you asked me, I don't know, 30 years ago, that really dates me, um, but if you asked me 30 years ago what kind of music I liked, I would say I like anything but country. I remember that my mother had a cassette in her car of Garth Brooks, and I was like, oh, you have to listen to this? Well, now I primarily listen to country. So Thomas Rhett has a song. It's titled Life Changes. The song is all about experiences that he's had in his life, how he thinks he has things figured out, and then something changes. The chorus of that song reminds us that we need to modify our game plan. I'm not going to sing it for you. It's probably going to play in my head as I say it for you. But it says, ain't it funny how life changes? You wake up, ain't nothing the same, and life changes. You never know what's going to happen. You make a plan, and you hear God laughing. Life changes, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Can anyone relate to that? Because I can. Like every day, it seems. You make plans, and they don't go the way that you intend. You have to modify them, because they're not really our plans. They are God's plans. So when I first started talking today, I told you that I got stand. Being stand isn't a bad thing. It's just a thing that happens because Pastor Stan tries to embody the team acronym that I shared. He has trust in God and people. He encourages others. He acknowledges gifts he sees in others, even if we don't see them ourselves. And he is able to modify his game plan because he knows, like us, that it is part of a bigger plan. We are all part of God's team. We need to trust in him. We need to encourage others as Christians. We need to acknowledge the gifts that we were given and be willing to modify our game plan because we know that we are all part of a much, much bigger plan. So each day, think of how you can be a team player. And if you can do that, you'll be emulating Jesus and shine his light to others as part of the body of Christ.